YouTubers, welcome back for another adventure. Okay, you are looking at a 2008 Wildfire 300 4x4 all-terrain vehicle. These things have a torque converter to make them go. I actually found the tag down there. If anybody cares, you can take a moment to blow that up and look at it. So I bought this thing in the dead of winter, uh, 250 bucks if you guys remember. And I kind of got it home and said, you know, whatever it is, it is, I'll look at it in the spring. Well, it's spring. First of all, it's red. This is not camouflage, this is moss. So I noticed that and oh yeah, well, it is what it is. Then I started noticing little things like this auto exhaust air cleaning situation here. And then uh, the starter button cob to the side. Uh, this thing, I was almost, after noticing a few of these things, I almost put the cover back on it and walked away. But I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to go through and I want to at least get it to start. Now, in my mind, I kind of bought it for the transmission, but you guys can see it's pretty pretty jacked up here. So I'm going to get my uh, can of WD-40 out and start spraying stuff. I've also been kind of looking, you know, for the wires to hot wire the ignition system. And I only see three wires coming out of here. Well, that gets me power, which is fine, but... I'm not sure where the CDI trigger is, where the pulse generator trigger is. So I'm going to have to fish around here a little more. Um, there doesn't appear to be an easy way to turn it over by hand. So I also need to get to the starter. And uh, I guess the air cleaner comes off. I could get right down to the starter here. Because I need to figure out if it's seized. If it's seized the game kind of ends quickly so probably that's where I should start before one turns over the engine always a good idea to check the oil the last thing you want to find out is that there's nothing in it and there's obviously oil in there <laughs> it's not a milkshake so uh, that's good let's hook up the jump pack and give it a spin so I removed the Briggs & Stratton air cleaner here and got the jump pack on, got that directly to the positive lead. Go slow, right? You want to let go quickly if uh, you hear any kind of clang. <laughs> maybe, just maybe we're going to pull this one out of the dirt. Getting the gas tank out is easy enough, right? Two bolts here and on the other side um, sits on this <laughs> foam thing. Um, so then it lifts right out. You have to unplug that guy. It was already done, so somebody's done that. Now I just have to slip the gas line off then the gas tank will be out of the way and hopefully life gets easy it has your typical gy6 type carburetor uh, which is constant velocity and it has this electronic choke um, when you start it up and you put power to this um, you actually heat up like a wax that expands and it um, closes the plunger and it stops enriching the mixture which means if uh, it's cold out and you start it and you leave the key on and it stalls it's going to chill back down um, but your choke isn't going to be on I don't particularly care for these carburetors so I want to get that off I also want to get that off so I can do a compression test on it on some of these well, stiff, first of all. On some of these, um, 
you give them full throttle and um, it, it opens the butterflies or it slides the slide and on some of these um, you rely on vacuum to do that you're not direct driving it this feels like a direct drive but anyway that carburetor is a big unknown so let's get it out of the equation of whether we're going to start or not the carburetor is off and off to the side and I just wanted to make sure that the carburetor will go on there right that it's not going to be hitting on the bottom or or something so the carburetor looks fine from that point of view I'm gonna to have to make an adapter you know get the plumbing fittings out this is um, one and a quarter male to female I guess it's a extender but um, goes right in nicely so we'll use that to make our adapter you guys have seen me make plenty of adapters so you don't need to watch me do this one the plug is out and you can see it looks like it's probably running at the minimum a little rich probably burning a little oil but it's not horrible got the compression tester all hooked up here and no carburetor so it's breathing well this is a dry compression test I'm trying to Oh yeah, she'll start over 90, they start over 120, very good. And it looks like somewhere around 135, that's not bad for dry, and this thing hasn't been started in the minimum of six months. Looks like longer than that. So, this engine, I'm going to dub it pretty healthy. So, let's smash a carburetor onto it and see if it'll start. I've oiled this stuff up and I still I still got no love here though so unfortunately I don't think we're gonna be able to get a ride out of it I really bought this rig for that transmission and the four-wheel drive I really didn't care too much about the engine so if I can't can't get this uh, transmission loosened up even though it runs um, I'm really not going to be happy with this rig. Let's call this part finding the pulse generator. We know that this is the flywheel side of the engine. You could kind of see wires coming out of the stator here. And what you see, there are five wires, right? Four yellow and one blue. The blue is the hot coming out of the stator the yellow that comes along with it right that guy is ground or for the pulse generator right the blue is the hot on the pulse generator and the yellow tabbed with it would be the ground to the pulse generator the three other yellow wires come from the alternator in this thing it's a three-phase alternator it actually puts out quite a bit of power so I'm going to disconnect both of these and there's a reason why I don't want the alternator putting power into the wire harness without a battery it could cook your uh, regulator doing that or if there's a short it could cause nothing but trouble so I'm going to disconnect that I'm also going to disconnect this side because I'm going to have to hook my portable CDI up to it a lot of times when you have wires coming out from the stator from behind the flywheel right there they typically look something like this colors vary but for some reason the pulse generator always seems to have a blue or it's blue and yellow or blue and white and then a ground and when they put them together like this it kind of makes it easy to figure things out from a method from elimination right you kind of oh I know these three go to the alternator right and you could kind of probe that out and if you probe in between these two with an ohm meter you will very quickly find somewhere between um, 30 and 130 ohms you can see I got the carburetor on there my really sketchy fuel tank you can see the hot side of the pulse generator going into the CDI box, CDI 
pulch generator input right there. You got the ground. You got the other ground on the engine. So we turn this on, which is good. I always get myself tied up here. Let me go get the uh, let me go get the tripod. It's easy to show you guys the engine running that way. Okay, let's see if it starts. These things seem to always come in two flavors. Easy start or never start. So, gas is on. Choke is on. Well, I guess the good news is that it runs, right? And it doesn't seem to smoke. There's no smoke coming out the back. So let's go with all those as positives. So my Wildfire 300 starts and runs, even sounds pretty good. Actually, it sounds really very good. Um, but the transmission seems seems to just be locked I rolled it back and forth a little bit you know what I mean you rock it and it still seems to be locked but it does appear to be locked in neutral normally when these things break they get stuck locked in a gear why would it lock in neutral so I I have to put another little bit of time into it these things here look like switches, as in, am I in neutral or reverse? Am I in high or low? That's what those two things look like to me. They don't look like safety relays, you know, like if the engine isn't started, it won't go into gear or um, it, um, it won't let you... I don't know going to revert well yeah I don't think those I think those are for the lights um, I don't I don't think those those are lockouts so to speak mechanical lockouts anyway I need to go do a little more research on this thing um, first Google search <laughs> uh, Foxfire 300 will not go into gear stuck in neutral see what they say and then uh, kind of go on from there if I weren't doing internet research if I was just I would probably um, pop that cover off and spin the input to the transmission and see if that helps it go into gear I did um, I did spray those two with blaster so maybe that'll loosen things up once again, I really bought this rig. I didn't buy this for the engine. I really bought it for the transmission. And if the transmission is for junk, I just spent 250 bucks on tires and a uh, water buffalo engine that I, I don't particularly care for. I guess, I guess it could, I mean, it's got a winch on it. A lot of parts here. But I, I really, in my mind, was that four-wheel drive unit, the, the four-wheel drive base on this whole thing. 
I'm also not thrilled that it's uh, it seems to be a full-time four-wheel drive. I'm not noticing, I don't think I'm noticing anything here to take it out of full-time four-wheel drive. Maybe I'm wrong. See all the, everything's worn off. Um, oh wait, no, I guess it does have an electronic four-wheel drive. So one of those has to be mechanical somehow. Anyway, I need to do a little more research on this puppy before I can continue to babble intelligently. And in the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Please remember, feet down, heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. If you could do, a, do me a favor, though... Um, Hit me with a like and hit me with a subscribe if you're not subscribed. Let's keep the channel growing. That uh, brings more of these videos uh, to all of us. All right. Once again, feet down, heads up. Get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.